So let's talk about this NSA crypto in the Linux kernel. This is actually a story from FOSS that broke uh, just a couple of days ago. And basically there's two, uh, there's two NSA encryption tools, Spec and Simon, uh, that uh, a, a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful Google director uh, recommended they be put in there. Now, I have not been able to see exact direct comments from Linus Torvalds on this, but obviously if it made it into the kernel, he's okay with it. Um, and so we're going to talk about this. Is this is this FUD, good old fudgy FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt? Or is there something to this? And what does all this have to do, if you read the description, what does this have to do with No Child Left Behind, huh? So we're going to go ahead and uh, unfold this. So let's go ahead and start with looking at this article itself. So this applies to Linux kernel 4.17, where uh, these two applications, the spec and the Simon, were implemented into the kernel as a module. Now, as of right now, they are not enabled by default, but they are available to enable. So it depends on, at this point in time, does the distro that you are getting your Linux system from have this enabled? Curiously, the one group that does have it enabled is Arch. <laughs> For whatever reason, um, although there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of threads about how to uh, disable it, how to completely remove it, and um, and recompile whatever else you want to do, it is still there. So let's go ahead and read through this guy. And I think that that uh, Foss itself, it's Foss is a website as a company. Man, these guys need to go more Foss and less annoying. They these guys run three. I count them three different JavaScript pop-ups when you load this page. Look at this crap. Don't do this. Let me see if I can get them to re-trigger. Uh, uh, probably not because I'm on the site. I'd have to do that. But there's an overall full-page cover annoyingness. And then they have the pop-up half on the bottom annoyingness. And when you kill that one, there's a pop-up video. Foss, get over it. Stop it. You're being bad. All right, let's get off of FOSS now and back onto the NSA and the kernel here. All right, so before you panic from wrong conclusions, you should know that spec is not a backdoor. Well, the thing is, is that we don't think it's a backdoor. The reality is of spec is there are aspects of this that we cannot audit. It has never been demonstrated as a backdoor. It has never been seen. Like, n people are somewhat suspecting it, but it's, it's not really demonstrated as such. But the thing that has most people concerned is that people have asked who know about this stuff, hey, we need to know how the X, Y, and Z component are working, and they're saying, we're not telling you. And that's really where the biggest problem is. So let's go ahead and get into this. So the NSA, famous for being privacy invasive, <clears throat> I think if you look up privacy invasion, the NSA is in the dictionary, isn't it? Um, past actions can cast depth doubts on every step it takes. They have even approached Linus Tarvolds to create a backdoor in Linux, which he refused immediately. <clears throat> so, you know, and find other ways in. Algorithm in question, spec, is a weak encryption, lightweight block cipher de designed for devices with low computing power, i.e. IoT devices. All right, so first, before we jump too far in, let me say that I am not a guy that knows about all of this type of back-end stuff. So I'm going to be going over some uh, some articles that I found which are discussing it in, in greater or lesser detail. I'm not the one that knows about this. I hope that we can raise issue with this and we get people who are highly knowledgeable about this stuff comment on it because as of right now, other than a few articles, there is no information about this. And I think that that's the, the thing that raises more eyebrows than anything. I'd like to see people who have real experience in this uh, weigh in so that we can figure out what's going on here. <clears throat> so NSA wanted SPEC and its companion algorithm, Simon, to be a global standard for the next generation of internet-based gizmos and sensors, which I always advocate don't use anyway, so I don't really care. Um, NSA tried aggressively pushing the algorithm to the extent that some crypt uh, cryptographer alleged bullying and harassment at the hands of the NSA, and this, I think, goes to somebody who's on a Twitter page. So um, Thomas Asher, uh, this is a Twitter page where he felt harassed by it. All right, so the problem with the algorithm is that the International Organization of Standards, or uh, ISO, yeah, we all love our ISOs, they rejected SPEC and Simon. Now, I will clarify here that they have not outright rejected it in the current form. There is still yet an ongoing vote. 
um, to be determined. The initial time that this was proposed, which was 2013, I think, it was rejected. Um, it is up for a vote again. Uh, individuals passed it, countries rejected it, mostly because they just were um, leery of the NSA in this, which rightly so. So the problem with the uh, or okay, um, problem with the algorithm is the International Standard for Organizations rejected Spec and Simon. The ISOs blocked NSA Simon and spec algorithms amid concerns they contained a backdoor that would allow U.S. spies to break the encryption. Um, so again, that's coming from Register, but I saw some other indications saying that the, there is, the vote has not yet occurred. I could be wrong about that. This isn't something I follow a lot. This article was passed on to me, and I thought this would be a fabulous Wednesday uh, discussion. Okay, though no researcher found any backdoors, the algorithms were rejected because the NSA did not even provide the normal level of technical details to researchers, which increased the speculation of the backdoor. So how'd this get in? Well, a guy at Google, because of course Google is one of the top dogs at the Linux Foundation, and Eric Bigger simply said, hey, let's include this. Um, so the reason they wanted to include this is to give better encryption options for lower end Android devices. So of course a lot of your, your Android has built into it the ability to encrypt your device, uh, but some of your lower end machines cannot do that. And so they wanted to add this into the kernel so that it can be activated on lower end devices uh, to allow at least some degree of security. And of course, here is the uh, comment, uh, comment from, from Eric Biggers. Uh, he talks about uh, added generic implementation of spec, including spec 128 and 64 variants. Spec is a lightweight blockchain cipher, excuse me, block cipher that can be much faster than AES on processors that don't have AES instructions. We are planning to offer spec XTS, probably spec XTS 256 XTS as an option for DM crypt and FS crypt on Android for low-end mobile devices with older CPUs and ARM v7 which don't have cryptography extensions. Currently such devices are unencrypted because AES is not fast enough even when the neon bit sliced implementations of AES is used. Other AES alternatives such as 2Fish, 3Fish, Camilla, Cast6, and Serpent aren't fast enough either. It seems only a modern ARC cipher can provide sufficient performance on these devices. All right, so that's kind of what he's saying. So this is where it has to do with No Child Left Behind. We're going to include these questionable, um, these questionable ciphers in the kernel simply so that we can make room for other devices that are falling behind. No Android device left behind, people. We have to have something to bring them all up to equal specs. From the highest best spec to the absolute lowest slowpoke, we need some better system. And so we are possibly risking, if this thing is a backdoor, if this thing is a problem, we are risking backdoors, issues, problems, insecurities in the entire Linux kernel, all to support crappy low-end Android devices. That's who put this in. Kind of frightening, really. So it begs that question, is this really safe or not? And that's kind of the thing we want to dig into, which I will not have a final answer. Okay, the focus is on providing encryption on Android Go and Android version tailored to run on entry-level smartphones. As of today, these devices are not encrypted because AES is not fast enough. You know, no Android left behind, people. No Android left behind. Okay, alert Linux users spotted the inclusion of spec in kernel 4.17 and since then has become a debated topic on various Linux communities on the internet. Arch users have already started discussions about blocking the module. However, <laughs> See, in kernel.org, uh, the spec module is turned off by default, but Arch has it turned on. You can actually disable it. You can blacklist the uh, spec module by adding a blacklist configuration file and then blacklisting config crypto spec. So that's going to disable it. So that's kind of what's going on. Of course, there's a Reddit thread that has uh, arisen about the topic over the last couple of days. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh that in case there's anything new on there. 
Um, so of course they're kind of talking about about this, um, and obviously some people are saying this is no big deal. You know, Linus said it's okay to have in there. It wasn't implemented. It's just a module. Um, you can use the module. You cannot use the module. Whatever is the case, we have a, a variety of abilities to deal with or not deal with this. So even in the Linux community, it's not all absolutely good or all absolutely bad. It's somewhere in the middle. And the biggest deciding factor is, is this a backdoor? You know, just because something comes from the NSA does not mean it's bad. Okay. <laughs> I might add chances are probably getting good, um, but at the time, it, 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 at the, the, the same time, just because it's a standard that came from the NSA doesn't mean it's bad. However, on the flip side of that coin, there are a few things that have been noted in this article here from the SystemD Free Linux community, which is uh, sysdfree.wordpress.com, and this was a, an interesting post that came out... Uh, came out a little while ago. Again, these guys like me, they don't have all of the technical background, but they're kind of piecing together things to indicate what is, uh, you know, what is the potential issues. It says here, spec is a long-term project to standardize encryption that goes around the internet. Seems the NSA has been the primary for, uh, force proposing what is pretty good encryption and what is not. It doesn't take a genius to assume that only encryption can be de decrypted by the NSA can be proposed. So this set of new rules is make its way into the open and free source software. All right. All right. Uh, is not what was there, uh, but it is not important. Let's see. We don't feel knowledgeable enough to discuss the matter, but we thought an alert uh, to read and judge for yourselves. Now, one of the things he mentions down in here is one of the main problems is that some of the Sto Snowden documents, which included plans by the NSA to weaken publicly available cryptography, as well as other instances like dual EC DRBG thing. Uh, so in other words, uh, the NSA wants there to be some public absolute standard. Um, uh, th they're putting some of these absolute standards out there. And uh, as they are doing that, um, what ends up happening is that uh, Snowden made reference that they want these standards out there so that they have the ability and the tools to break them a lot easier. Now, the other fascinating thing is that the NSA is absolutely committed to not releasing bug reports. When they find exploits in anything, they sit on them. They don't release them to the community. They don't alert the vendors. They don't do any of that. They sit on them so that they can utilize them as zero day exploits as well. And that is absolutely 100% unethical. And that's, I think, what raises the biggest eyebrows about this. Is this, does this really have a backdoor or not? Because remember, there's parts they're not telling us about it. Uh, so here is where the information comes out. Now, this article, remember, is June 2018. He actually cites references that um, the final vote to accept or not accept this is not yet uh, not yet done. <clears throat> so the cancellation still requires a vote of the full committee level, which has not taken place as of June. So I'm not sure if that has taken place yet or not. Much of the criticism mentioned earlier was both the NSA's reputation and with the way they handled the review process. One U.S.-based cryptography researcher said, unfortunately, the NSA is lacking a good reputation in academia. It's not very long ago when AES was selected as the optimized code provided by the NSA had side channel flaws. Likewise, when the NSA proposed SHA-1 as a replacement of SHA, then again, there were security weaknesses. Bottom line is that in most cases, the NSA has pushed for adoptions and standards in which security vulnerabilities were found very soon afterward. So it's very possible this thing is, is insecure and they're trying to push it this fast so that it gets an insecurity into the back door. Now the good thing with Linux is if it does determine that, we might just decide to strip it out. And if Google would like to get the little left behind Google Android Go devices to have this, they can put it in themselves, Google. You're Google. You can drop the module right on back in and activate it. All you want, it's your own system. That's what's great about FOSS. Okay, but don't push weak, crappy NSA standards on the rest of us all for the sake purpose of these silly little cutesy little low-end devices if it's a problem add it to the kernel you're modifying the linux kernel for linux or for android anyway what's the big deal 
and that's what people are mostly having uh, having a, a fit about. Is um, what, so? What's what's my final takeaway here? My final takeaway is it's good that it's it's not enabled. It's good that distributions will have the ability, and we as as end users will also have the ability to. Um, remove this or blacklist it, but I also agree with other people in the Reddit post who simply said that not everybody has the technical skill or know how how to do that. And you know and, and many of the many of the uh, the distributions, they're too busy to be working with modifying the Linux kernel. There's enough other stuff they need to be worried about to pull out those systems. So it'll be interesting to see if, if uh, any of the distros, mainstream distros down the road, remove this, I think that would be interesting. Um, and so the reality is we don't have all the details what's going on. It's good that they're trying to do something for some low-end devices. But the reality is this is this is something that should raise eyebrows. And if Google is merely putting this in for low-end Android devices, it's kind of meaningless because they can put it into the Android kernel themselves. Uh, they don't need it to go through the entire kernel system. Um, and that's kind of my, my takeaway. I don't think this is the end of the world. I'm not going to sit here and say, the NSA is spying on us all now who use Linux. But at the same time, it is worthy of examining it. It's worthy of staying on top of it. It's worthy of probably disabling it, or if you have the know-how, uh, removing that part and recompiling your kernel. That's kind of what I thought. Um, so what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Uh, for those that do not want to stick around for the comments a little bit later, don't forget you can help support the channel. Oh, hold on. Kitty fell. Come on, buddy. He tried to jump and he missed. You tried to jump and you missed. Hey, everyone. Check us out on switchtothinks.com forward slash support. All right. So you can check me out at uh, switchtothinks.com forward slash support. Uh, if you do want one of those fun water bottles I mentioned her here at the beginning, I do have these guys, stainless steel water bottles, available at shop.switchtolinux.com. And I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, folks, and uh, stick around for the live chat. And we'll go ahead and go through these.